Again, Lou here from Jersey Shore. So, speaking of violating warranties, we've taken a brand new van with, I don't know, less than 15,000 miles, and we've disassembled the entire thing. Why? Well, we have a witch mounting plate. Down underneath that, we have a winch. So, taking this apart, there's a ton of nuts and screws. It's not terrible, though. Um, when it goes back together, I'll probably go through the sequence of how it comes apart. In case you're curious about how it comes apart. If you're not, then don't worry about the last, I don't know, two minutes of the video or so. But to make room for the winch, we have to do some cutting and removing of things. So, the first thing that you'll notice is that the metal bumper bar across the front here is gone. Also, if you're familiar with these trucks, you notice that the power steering cooler is gone. And we just have a loop with a hose for right now so we can move the truck around. Eventually, the power steering cooler is going to get mounted up here. So to start making room for this winch plate. Now, a winch plate, you, you can get them a lot of different places. You can even make your own. What I like to do is I get the ones from Harbor Freight. I use the 10 or 20% coupon. Uh, reason being is that all the holes are in it for the winches. The hole is already in it for the fair lead. It's already bent. And for 40 bucks, it's going to cost you that much to buy the steel and then start forming it and then spend however long drilling holes, depending on your method of drilling holes. Not all of us have a mag drill, okay, or a CNC uh, router or plasma or anything like that. So this is nice because we just take it, we modify it to what we need, and it works. So here, what's going to happen is that this and this are going to get cut off. Once that gets cut off, the winch mounting plate is going to end up about there. The winch is going to go on there, and the factory bumper cover is going to go right over the whole thing. Now, I'll get into the other fabrication we're going to do as far as tying the plate into the frame rails, wrapping around the frame rails, and then adding gussets and adding recovery points that will also come through the front bumper. So, that was a long, long introduction. So with that, grab a cup of coffee, hang out, and let's tear up a brand new van. Basically, uh, after a week of taking off from the van, okay, I uh, work on another project, we're back on the van, doing the winch. And you see I got the grill support sort of mopped into place here. All right, but more importantly, what's going on, so right down here is that 8,000 pound winch. So it's back behind the bumper cover. We didn't have to cut a big hole in it. Now there's another company that makes the mounts for this. And it's a great kit. But uh, the way that theirs is designed, you have to cut a huge hole in the front, whereas this big plate and then your fairly goes over it. And I think it really takes away from the lines of the van. So a part of my goal for this was to be able to do this and just have the fair lead. And that's gonna work out perfectly, okay? So, <clears throat> um, let me take this apart real quick. I'll show you what's going on. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you a couple of details. Um, the power steering cooler, as I said in the previous video, is going to get mounted up here. Originally, it would have been down here where the winch is. There is not a whole lot of real estate in here. Uh, this is an 8,000 pound uh, worn winch. I think it's a worn. Yeah, 8,000 pound worn winch. Um, and it I mean, just barely clears everything. Okay, but one of the things that I was looking for while doing this is to make sure that the alignment tabs for the bumper cover and all that go back together. So that's going to bolt together without a problem. Okay, we're still going to have our lines there. Looking at this this way, I don't know if you guys could see, but there is... Uh, let me, Okay, so there is hardly any room to spare. Now I have this cable back behind here, just give me a space off the AC condenser. Okay, um, but I mean, there is no room to spare. All right, the other thing I had to do, and nothing's done yet, but where the bumper cover goes is I had the clearance where this top bar for the winch is so that 
it fits. Okay. Otherwise, it wouldn't sit flush against the uh, the fair lead or or go into place where the bumper cover would go back on and not look goofy. Okay. So that being said, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so here's <clears throat> that Harbor Freight winch mount. All right, now again, nothing is finished. You know, I just went and cut this off with a plasma cutter, set this back as far as I can so that the winch mount itself actually comes underneath the AC condenser. All right, to push it back as far as possible. The original mount <clears throat> would have come straight like this. So I cut that back to be able to fit the bumper cover back on. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do my final fit. So I'm actually going to bolt the winch to the winch plate. It's close. I think the holes are lined up. Uh, but I'm going to bolt this on so that I know exactly where it's going to live. Clean up these edges. Okay. And then add a 3 16 plate. I'll probably whack this off right here. Add a 3 16 plate. Start coming around. If I have room to get past the, the winch motor here. Uh, start coming around. And then from there, let me show you on this side. From there, I could start building out my my uh, mounting plate and the webbing that's going to connect everything. Believe it or not, I think the hardest part of this was actually getting this to fit behind the grill. Now, the other thing that I may have to do, and I got to talk to the owner about it. Uh, he has the a wireless remote kit for it, but... <clears throat> there you cannot get your hand in here to engage and disengage this clutch uh, so I may cut one of the um, the slat right here would be the one that has to go so you get your hand in there to be able to move that but I gotta tell you I am so happy I was able to fit five pounds of you know what or I'm sorry ten pounds of you know what into a five pound bag all right, uh, let me get this thing mounted up, and I'm going to finish up all my final adjustments and make sure it's centered. Okay, so, mock-up for the van. What does it take to put a winch on one of these? All right, so you saw I had the front fascia on here. That fit great. Everything looked good. Now, the next thing is i got to start making templates. So, using CAD, or cardboard aided design, I have templates made for the front mount and my little sandwich plates I'm putting around the frame here. All right. Now, at this point, I'm just about ready to start cutting steel. Okay, now, I have some webbing to make to come over to here and come up to here. All right, and wrap around this corner and sort of box this. Uh, but before any of that gets done, everything's got to be level. So I got a jack under the vehicle, and I got the front end of this leveled off, and up on the vehicle, got that leveled off. That way, when everything goes back together, it's not crooked. Now, the other thing that I did is I have this centered from side to side here, and uh, now I'm ready to make my templates for over here, my webbing, but just to show you kind of what I got going on here, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this out of one piece of steel or if I'm just going to whack it up into a couple of different pieces, but the way this works is that this is going to slide forward and then down, same thing going in, okay, and there's plenty of room in there. All right, so I can make this out of mm, one piece like this. Okay, so from here over to here would be one piece, and then these would be two separate pieces on the end. And then there'll be holes that these sandwich plates will bolt to. Okay. Um, kind of digging the design of it. It's nice and... Uh, 
simple if anybody's got to ever take this off. Simple to design and make work. It's a different story. But as I found from my old shop partner, okay, if anybody remembers Ted, um, he taught me a lot of what I know. Uh, sometimes the the simplest designs, the simplest ways of working on things are the most difficult to come up with. It's easy just to cobble something together and you make it impossible for anybody else to have to work on it. Um, it takes work to make it serviceable. Ask an engineer. They don't care. You know, engineers lock it. Logic. You know, fuck it. I don't have to work on it. So, uh, I'm trying to keep this as simple as uh, and as easy as possible for anybody who may have to come in here. So, Riley and I are going to get to work. Can say hi, Riley? Can we say hi, Riley? No. He ain't having it. He ain't having it. He's enjoying it. We finally got a nice warm day here. So, all right. Um, back to more cardboard. All right, so once you have your cardboard templates cut out, you got to transfer them to steel, right? So, that's exactly what I do. I take it, I put it on the steel. I use these silver streak pencils. Um, sometimes I'll paint the metal and then I'll scribe it. Uh, the silver streak really shows up good uh, with the plasma cutter. Yes, that's how we're cutting this. So, I've made my lines. Don't know if it picks up on the camera. So now... I'll uh, go grab the fire cutter. All right, so you can freehand this. You can use a fence of some kind. Take a piece of steel, clamp it down, and then use that as your straight edge. These pieces aren't that big. So I'm just going to go ahead and freehand it. Hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. And the edges have to be welded, or, sorry, the edges have to be ground down after cutting with the plasma cutter, so they don't have to be perfect, but I want to get them close. So, uh, oh, here we go. I just wanted to cut off that little tab that was on here, but that's pretty much it. So now I'll grind the edges and then I'll show you how I score and then bend the steel. Okay, so got the steel all cleaned up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my template and here are my bend lines. Okay. So I'm basically going to put that right on top here. Find my pencil. And I'm just going to, just going to put a line there and there. Connect the dots. Dots. Okay. So. Alright. 
Everybody on board so far? Okay, now comes a sort of intricate part. So what the goal is here is I'm going to take the edge of a cutoff wheel. I'm going to score this line. Okay. I don't want to cut all the way through, but I'm going to cut almost all the way through. What that's going to do is it's going to weaken the metal, allow me to be able to bend it. Simple enough. So, I'm going to put on my safety goggles. You people put on your safety splints. take you a couple tries to get it but the end result when you get done should be that you can bend the cell balls by hand I got a little more to go here Okay, that's how you bend 316 steel by hand. Now, just gotta do the other one, bend that, and then I can test fit it, and uh, well, keep on trucking, right? I'll see you after I get this all done. Okay, so for the recovery points on this bumper, what I got is two by three quarter steel bar. Well, <clears throat> we're gonna see if this Harbor Freight uh, 45 amp plasma cutter has got the beans to cut through it. It says it will. So let me go turn it up to 11. Now I used to have <clears throat> a longevity 40 amp. And it would cut this without a problem. So, again, the uh, plasma cutter I got, I've used for sheet metal. I've used for, you know, the 316s. It's been fine. Well, let's let her rip. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm impressed. All right, so back behind all the plastic is the new winch mount that I built. I'm not going to tell you that this is easy. You know, this front end has been on and off 132 times. Um, the mounts are on for the push bar. I've already pre-fit the, the push bar. There's only four holes left to drill. Okay, but before I do that, I actually have to mount the recovery points. 
So before I mounted the recovery points, there's a ring that goes around the bottom of the truck that actually holds the bottom plastic, just like the factory did. So I wanted to make sure that that ring was put back on so that you know, you're going down the road, the front end ain't flopping around. So once again, pull the front end up back off of this, and then I'll get the recovery point set. Uh, I'll get a couple of things tacked on, and then the whole thing can come off for finish welding and uh, grinding and painting. Make sure you keep a bag with all your hardware. So this is that ring I was talking about. Uh, made brackets for that. Made sure that all the holes lined up on the bottom. <clears throat> uh, the recovery points. I know I've gone over this, but they're three quarter inch. Reinforced. They're gonna sit about here. And they're actually gonna bolt to the sides of the push bar because they come out so far because of the push bar. Uh, when I get ready to end the video, I'm going to go through all of this step by step, okay, what all had to be done. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so let's talk about order of assembly for a minute. All right, so let's talk about order of assembly for a minute. One fabricating. You're going to have to put things together in a certain order, all right? It's the only way they're going to work. Now... In this case, I'm getting ready to put on the recovery points. Now, like I said, they have to come out far because they have to get past the push bar here. All right. So what I did is I made up this bracket out of 3 16 And if it looks like it's on some weird angles, that's because it is. Because the push bar angles out this way. This sits straight up and down. And the push bar also angles back. So it's this way and this way. So that's why this looks like this. Now, I've just got this held on with a little spring clamp here. Like that. Okay. So with this pushed out straight, standing up straight. This comes right up against here. That gives me a gap between the recovery point and the push bar. And what'll happen is that this is gonna get welded to the recovery point. The bracket will get drilled from the side and there'll be two bolts from the side. Why? Because when it comes to disassembly, if somebody's gotta work on this, they can pull the two bolts from the side, the whole push bar comes off, the front fascia will come off past that, and they can access whatever they need to access. Um, now, as far as order of assembly, as, well, as far as what we're doing, okay, there's a couple things that need to happen here. Okay, that recovery point's gonna get welded down here. All right, and I've already got this beveled and chamfered. Um, now, the other thing that's gonna happen is that I have these support pieces that I need that are gonna go over this, right? So just picture this because I got the C clamp in the way. So it's going to go over this, weld on here, weld on to where the winch mount is, you know, the fair lead mount rather, and weld all the way around here. Now, the other thing that's going to happen as soon as I find it. that there's another piece that's going to go on the back that fits over this. Again, I got all this stuff in the way, but okay, so that's going to fit over there. It's going to get welded on the bottom, welded all the way around. You with me so far? All right. The last piece that has to go on is 
is this top support bracket, which is gonna weld around here, all the way around this corner, weld to the top of this, which means it has to be welded from underneath, so I have to ask to come off the truck to do it. Um, so there's a, there's a lot going on just here, all right? Never mind the rest of this assembly. There's a lot going on. So how am I gonna do all this with the C-clamp in the way and spring clamps and all that? Well, again, this comes down to your order of assembly. So in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack the recovery point to the bracket. I'm gonna bolt the bracket to the push bar. Once I have that bolted tight, then I can remove the C-clamp. This guy shouldn't move. Okay, so I may even put a tack weld here. <clears throat> now, the wings that come off the front and support this, all right, they don't have to be gusseted in here. They're gonna be welded to the uh, bumper mounting plates. All right, so this is the actual frame of the truck. All right, uh, and they're gonna be supported here. So that's gonna give us all the strength we need. So this recovery point, if you do a side pull this way or a side pull that way, nothing's gonna move, all right? Um, if you go up or down, nothing's going to move. Ideally, you'll be able to hook a crane up to these two recovery points, pick the whole truck up in the air with it if you want. The other thing that had to happen was that for these wings, you see these brackets here, these brackets give the push bar some stability from rocking back and forth. Um, on the factory steel bumper that would be here, this would use the existing oil cooler mounting holes, but that's all gone. The oil cooler is going to be coming up here. Uh, that's why these long hoses are on there. So these are actually the factory brackets. I just modify them to work. And there's adjustability in these. These can slide back and forth a good bit. So that is pretty much where we are. So the reason why I brought all this up to you is when you're putting your stuff together, be careful how it, you're assembling it. Because if you tried to put these on first, you'd never get this in. And if you put this on first without this, well, this may end up in the wrong spot. Now you gotta cut everything apart. So it's a lot of fitting, a lot of grinding, a lot of fitting, a lot of fitting, take, putting things together, taking them apart, more fitting. And when you think it fits good, check it again. All right, let me get some tack welds thrown on here and uh, get some holes drilled and start making this look like something because I would love to have this thing off the truck today and do all the finished welding and grinding that it needs. Right then, everything's tacked up. Now it's time to unbolt it. I'm gonna take this push bar off, make sure the grill still fits over these support tabs. And if that's the case, well, the whole thing comes off. Exactly how I wanted that to work. 